She sees the gun, all right. She says, don't hurt anybody. I says, young lady, I'm not here to hurt anybody. I'm here for money. And then I'm going to bail out of this plane. Yeah, it was towards the end of the month, June 23rd, when this all took place. On this particular day, we were on the last leg of the trip, and we were going to stay the night in Tulsa. So it's, it's now or never. Now or never. And I, I actually was thinking to myself, dude, you got to pump up your nuts to get this done. Otherwise, it's over. So I leaned over. Uh, and that's the, uh, one of the passengers there. I says, uh, where's the men's room? And he told me it's in the back on the right hand side. And, um, uh, one of our passengers got up, went into the back lavatory. We were towards the end of the flight. We were about ready to descend into Tulsa. I said, okay. I reached down, grabbed my attache case. This thing's got about, oh, it must have weighed about 15 or 20 pounds. It was heavy. That gun in that clip with uh, all those 45 caliber bullets and everything. So I grab that and I go to the uh, uh, men's room. I open the door, close the door, and lay my attache case on the counter. I pull out my gloves and I pull out the wig put on the wig, took the gun, and uh, took the gun in my hand and pulled the uh, chamber back until it, uh, until it clicked. This was a, a very cautious uh, uh, operation. I had to pull this thing back and make sure it didn't slip. Because if it slipped and a cartridge went into that uh, chamber, and and fired, uh, it would be over, because we're at uh, probably fifteen fifteen thousand feet at the time, and uh, it would have blew a hole in the plane. Uh, so I got that thing to click. Then I opened up the door, uh, and uh, closed the door, and I was in in the back of the plane there. Put on a man's wig, dark glasses. Um, that you couldn't see his eyes, um, surgical gloves, and he came out with a machine gun. I was crouched down, and I was uh, going like this, trying to get the attention of the stewardess, any stewardess. And he stood at the back of the stair, uh, at the back of the plane. Now I was at the beginning of coach, and. I'm serving sandwiches. I've run out and I'm starting to come back when my flying partner, Jane, was in the galley, which is at the back. Okay. Nobody, nobody sees me. None of the passengers see me. None of the stewardesses in the aisle see me. Until about three minutes, then the stewardess sees me. She comes back and she said, don't hurt anybody. He had said to her, uh, Miss, take this note to the cockpit. So in those days, we had a signal where we were supposed to go to the phone, talk to the cockpit, and there was a, we were to say, Captain, all is calm, which meant we're being hijacked. She says, the gun, all right. She says, don't hurt anybody. I says, young lady, I'm not here to hurt anybody. I'm here for money, and then I'm going to bail out of this plane. Take this note and give it to the pilot, and then come back here immediately. So I gave her the note. She ran up to the cockpit. She had no chance to get to the phone, so she's taking the note up the aisle, and I'm coming back down. And Jane's kind of making these funny little 
faces as we're about ready to pass. And I'm thinking, what is she doing? And then when we passed and I see this guy with the dark glasses and the gun and oh boy, <laughs> stewardess training. I remember saying, keep the passengers calm. And uh, so I just got more sandwiches and out I went again to, you know, like nothing's going on. And then the captain came over the intercom. Came back. Said, what's next? And I said, I need a place to sit down. Uh, clear out these three seats, these three three seats right here, and and give them an upgrade to uh, first class. And told everybody that uh, we have a guest on board, and he has invited us back to St. Louis, so we're going with his request. So people couldn't quite figure out why were we, you know, because we're almost to Tulsa. And as we're turning and going back, and so it's like, it's okay, just guy back there with a gun. Don't charge him. Just send him to first class, free upgrade. So the uh, stewardess, uh, her name was Jane Elizabeth Furlong. To this day, she hates me. She won't talk to me. And I talked talk to one of the other stewards. But here's what happened. The uh, dude, his wife, and two kids. Uh, he had a young girl. She's about 10 or 11, 12. He had a young son. He was young, 10 or 11, 12. He was very old. And him. So the woman goes first. The young girl goes next. She's going to first class. The, the little boy, hey. He stops about 10 feet up the aisle, stops, turns around like that. He's staring at me, staring at me, looking at the gun, and he, he just shakes his head like, like that. If you're at the very back of the plane, uh, there's the two lavatories, and then on the left side is the galley. Across from the galley is a wide expanse because there is an emergency door. But between the lavatory and that wide expanse are two rows with three seats each. So six seats. And there was a family there. And he did kick them out. And they moved further up. We weren't totally full. The husband of this uh, woman, uh, uh, no, nobody else sees this weapon. So the dude gets up. He's about six foot five, six foot six. Big guy. Looks like an NFL player. He gets up, turns around, and he faces me. And he's in the aisle, staring at me. He doesn't blink. We're eyeball to eyeball. He doesn't blink. I don't blink. I can see what he wants, what's going through his brain. I want to disarm this fool. And so I can see that. So I take the weapon and I point it directly at him. Okay, I'm pointing it at his chest. And I give him the growl, like, uh, like that. I, I didn't say anything. I just looked at him. Um, and so they move further up. Can you see the gun? Oh, yeah. <laughs> the family back here knew. But if you were facing forward, no, you wouldn't have known. He got he got the point. He turned around and headed, headed up to uh, first class. But I wasn't going to blink at all. Okay? If he would have kicked me or rushed me or everything, that gun would have beep, 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 beep. He'd have been all over. He'd have been dead. Hero. And I would have been facing the death penalty in Missouri. They, they, yeah, it, it, that would have been very, very bad. So what happened is that I take the plane at that point. Pilot announces to the uh, cat, uh, crew, everybody, he says, we have a passenger on board who wants to return to St. Louis. So we're returning to St. Louis right now. Boom. So he turns around and hits St. Louis. And we get to St. Louis. 
And so as we came back, he sat in the very last row on the aisle. And then he had us, first we had to go and get anybody who had a camera and um, take the film out. And we brought it back to him in those days. Um, you know, he would expose the film. Um, we were, he told us he wanted women and children in first class and beginning of coach and the men behind. So we were breaking up families. It was very quiet. People, yeah, very quiet. And I know I was very scared. I'm sure we were all very scared because you don't know when somebody's doing something like this. Yeah. So we landed far from the airport out in the fields somewhere in, at the airport. And um, I told the stewardesses, I says, we got to get rid of people on this boat plane. I says, I have the pilot announce all the women and children get off this plane. <laughs>